Hi, I'm Frank Rath from PublicSpace.net. Today I'm going to show you how you can set the shooting dates of the image files from a date and time embedded in the file name. This shooting date and time, most commonly the so-called EXIF DateTime original timestamp, is used by photo management software like Apple Photos or Adobe Lightroom to chronologically sort your photos. At the end of the video, I will also show you how to do the reverse, putting the shooting date embedded in your photos into your file names. And I'll explain how that can come in handy if you have an image processing tool that messes that information up during processing. So let's start by opening my Find Attribute 7 tool. I have prepared some demo files for you to demonstrate all of this. Dropbox, for instance, when it backs up your photo stream, uses a file name convention that puts the date of when the photo was shot or when it was first created on the file system into the file name. So here we can see its format. Four-digit year, month, then the time in the 24-hour European-style clock. This is used in a lot of technical applications because it's easy to pass and it's unambiguous. So this first picture here was taken by my iPhone. So this actually has got a daytime original timestamp. This information is actually embedded inside of the file and tells you when exactly this picture was taken. The creation date and the modification date over here show when the file was created on the file system, not when it was originally taken. So these two dates are not always very significant. If you look at my other files here, they don't have daytime originals because they're screenshots. The information simply isn't there. So now, how do we go about passing this and putting it into the daytime original? First, we need to select the advanced date manipulation action. This is the most powerful action in the Battle Finder attributes, and this is a lot more flexible than the other simpler actions around it. But the price for that is that it is a little bit more complicated to use it effectively. So we don't want to overwrite the file creation and modification dates in this example, but we do want to set the daytime original as well as the daytime digitized fields. The daytime digitized is usually used for scanned pictures or for screenshots. So over here we can see a preview of what the daytime original and the daytime digitized are going to be set to. Now, where does this 6th of February come from? It's because we're on the specific date setting over here, and we have started with this particular date and time here. Those values actually default to the moment that this video was recorded, but this is not really the setting that we need. We don't want to take an existing file date, but instead we are going to select date embedded in the file name. So here, then you see the format. So in this extraction section, we have all the settings that have an influence on exactly how this date in the file name is interpreted. So we do have a date and time, and we actually have the same format as there. So we have the four digit year, month and day. And then we've got the hour, the minute and the second. But in this example here, we have underscores instead of periods. Using periods in file names is not something that I would personally recommend doing because it can confuse a lot of programs. I would always reserve the period symbol for the file extensions in order to avoid trouble. But this is how Dropbox names files. So I'm just changing this pattern over here to match that one over there. So HH period, MM period, SS. As you can see now, it's passed correctly. So we have the 19th of January, 1343. That's really all we need to do here. I'll just show you, however, that you can have any pattern that you want. But if your pattern doesn't make sense, a better find attributes will complain and ask you to fix it. Down here, you also have presets for some of the most common patterns. We're also currently using month numbers here, rather than month names. And the 24-hour clock instead of the 12-hour clock, like in America, with an AM or an PM behind it. But we've already got the right one for this example, so we are just going ahead and perform the changes. Then we get this dialog that tells us that we should really only be doing this on backups, because we have to change the content of the files themselves, because this is an embedded date. It's very unlikely that anything bad will happen to your files using this action. In 15 plus years of this tool existing, I've only heard of one instance where a file was actually damaged, and then it could still be retrieved and we got that fixed. But there is a small risk that things could go wrong. So if you don't want to lose your original files, back them up before you do this kind of thing. It's always best to have backups of the originals. 
So it has now processed the files and we can see the dates have been changed. So we are finished with these example files. But I also wanted to show you that there are other date formats that can also be supported. So here, for instance, we have got dates that are written out in full. So here we have got a different format. In this one, we have got spaces, for instance. So since I'm familiar with the tool, I'm just going to write the pattern out. So it's the day, the month, the year is a four-digit number, the hour, a space, the minute, a space, and finally the seconds. Now this matches everything here, except that we're still using month numbers. So let's switch to using month names. Now everything seems to be working correctly, and we've passed this one correctly too. So here we have a list of the names of all 12 months. Now in file names you will find all kinds of different ways of expressing month names. So we have some common presets over here. So for instance you can add all the English month names, the French month names, the German month names, etc. Or you can also have abbreviations, for instance three-letter English months. Here that would be Jan, Feb, etc. Alternatively you can also simply type in the 12 month names in whatever language or format that you require. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this to process this first example and confirm it. So now we only have this last one left. So here we don't have a time, just a date. So we tell the program this. The format is again DDMM4Ys. So now everything is matching up and the date is passed correctly. But we have this 12 noon here appear out of nowhere. In fact, this comes from this static time field over here. Since there are no file dates without time, we can choose whichever time of the day we want to use with this field. 12 noon seems like a reasonable choice. Just going to apply that one as well, and voila, we've done all of them. Now, as I have mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is a reverse step that can often be useful. So what we have done so far is to take a shooting date that is already embedded in the file name, and we have used it to set datetime original of that image. But that's only possible if that date is already present in the file name. If the date wasn't there in the first place, we'd be completely stuck. So one thing that we can do in order to prevent the accidental loss of the shooting date information is to deliberately store it in the file name. In a normal photography or journalistic workflow, we often encounter tools that either deliberately strip shooting date information from files or don't preserve it correctly. In both cases, that leaves us with image files that don't sort properly in most image management tools. So here I'm going to show you how you can use a Betterfinder Attribute 7's companion tool called the Betterfinder Rename 11 to prevent accidental loss of that information. Many photographers do this routinely before processing their photos. So let's launch a Betterfinder Rename 11. I'm going to take my sample files here again that now all have got properly set daytime originals. And I'm selecting the daytime category. We have a host of different actions here, but I'm going to select Rename to Date and Time, which completely overrides the current file name for this example. We need to first make sure that we don't use the file creation or modification dates, but the digital camera EXIF date. This is a composite date, which means that a better finder rename would choose the best available information. If the daytime original or the daytime digitized are present, it will use those. Otherwise, it will look into other fields that tend to have the same information. Here we can choose any format we want. I would probably still go for the same format as before. So a four digit year, month, day. So here that's 2023, 01. 19 with a 24 hour clock with the seconds. The advantage of that format is that it is simple, unambiguous, and easy to pass. So now we can just proceed with the rename and rename all. Click OK. So these files now all have easy to pass file dates that are ready to be passed back into a better find attributes to restore the shooting dates should they get lost. And the good news is that the majority of automated image processing utilities preserve the original file name, even if they are less careful with the metadata. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope you have found it to be useful. Please subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.